Welcome to Brunch with REC, another edition. Good morning, my brother. Good morning and welcome. Nice to start a Saturday morning with you guys. Look at the screen. Like, look at the screen. <laughs> Who's the best looking panel on Zoom right now? And it's this one right here. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's Brunch with REC with your boys. Jazz Takar and Simeon, a.k.a. Seamills, a.k.a. Big Papa, a.k.a. The Teddy Bear, Papa Alias. It was the hammer. I know. The I hammer. Took, I took the hammer out. It's morning. It's early. Look at the food on the table. Got some hot sauce for us. If wherever you're signing in from, always, as always, let us know. Let us know where you're coming in from here in Toronto today. I woke up. 27 degrees at seven o'clock in the morning i hope wherever you are in this beautiful beautiful nation of ours and some of our friends from the states as well have been coming on recently just to hear what's going on in the greater toronto area and and the rest of southern ontario we have possibly a couple of guests uh joining us today which we're going to touch on that a little bit later uh but simos how's your weekend brother First and foremost, Mm -hmm. as always, good morning, REC Nation. Good morning, Canada. Good morning, Ontario. Good morning, Toronto. Good morning, Mississauga. Good morning, East Credit, which is my neighborhood. I would like to wish everybody a tremendous weekend because the weather couldn't be better. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing this afternoon, and that's going to be sipping refreshments in my backyard. I have a feeling that's going to be an alcoholic refreshment. It will yeah, be an I'm alcoholic. Sure. Yes, it will be an alcoholic. reaction. Where are you going to go? Some, some, some. What are those things now? Gin smashes, or vodka listen, smash. You'll go to the gin listen, smash. I'll listen, go to it's summertime. Smash. Your boy's into gin. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. This is my intent for the day, <laughs> yeah. uh, is to catch up on work this morning. We yeah. already had a little bit of a session, which was great and productive. And uh, we're going to do brunch. We're going to try to bring some value to all of our beautiful people. Please tell us where you're signing in from. It is very important to us uh, to, to know where you're coming from. Of course, uh, what you want to hear. Uh, and uh, just it's going to be a strong day. And we have an amazing guest uh, here with us uh, to bring top value. Yeah. So can't wait to get into it. I mean, we're going to be talking about all things real estate accounting. I mean, this has now been for the last I'm going to say about three months, we've had our REC insiders, and as we always say how much we appreciate you guys, not only for for all the business that uh, you, you you do with us, but also everyone that you introduce us to, but most importantly, just the topics you give us. You give us the topics, we go reverse engineer it, and now for the last three months you guys have been saying we need you need to bring on your accountant we sure. need we have so many questions so today's format is going to be just like every other week Simos and i do our thing um we go kind of back and forth and banter with our with our guests but we're going to have a a q a, Q&A. not really a q a uh a slot just keep asking questions in the comments if you're watching right now live on facebook and to the thousands that watch the recording, thank you for that. Always leave your comments because we go back and make sure we get the questions answered. But today, I want you to be asking all your questions, your hot burning questions. And and if there's something more that needs to be done, like on a one-on-one, we'll make sure that we connect you with our guest. A lot of you have been working with uh, 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 Mr. Jeff Warren uh, of recent. He was actually, he joined us uh, not too long ago. Well, it's going back to August on our <laughs> Marathon. We'll the touch marathon, on. baby. We'll t- we'll what touch is the on next that. marathon, Jeff? Well, Let's make you commit. You know what? Let's, Let's not make, make me commit. commit right now. <laughs> Stephen and Laura have been uh, uh, putting that on the whiteboard as well. We're going to definitely get back to that. I see Tyler just signed on. As always, I'm I'm monitoring the comments, and Stephen's behind the ones and twos here of our new beautiful setup, uh, which you guys can't see, unfortunately, right now. Um, but it's a uh, uh, the first ever mobile streaming unit that we built out yesterday the, the 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 media squad built it out got us a got us some more space to work with here in the studio it's on wheels and it's a really cool little setup go check our instagram profiles uh to take a look at that nice to see anna on tyler um as always is joining us and john and nat so let us know keep on letting us know Mr. What- Ephraim francisco from pickering good yeah. morning sir hans James, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, Steven, who's, uh, w- what's our boy Jordan's um, Instagram profile? Because we got to thank him for this beautiful, beautiful brunch. Beautiful. That he, what do you leave us with today? Um, what I see in here, I see uh, caramelized onion, red pepper, 
uh, what appears to be some spinach, what appears to be some beautiful smoked ham, uh, feta cheese inside this wonderful omelet. And uh, that's the one that I'm going to make uh, myself a part of. And he does fresh bread every morning, every brunch for us i will see much just drop it in there for me if you don't mind brother um a fresh bread fresh croissants make sure to go check out his instagram profile if you're looking for some catering services jordan really takes care of us tyler if you can also just put the uh uh, link uh to his profile so people can go check him out just an amazing guy who runs around the greater toronto area and is catering food for people i love the startups i mean we we were uh, uh, actually on uh, just our buddy Justin Conical's Prime uh, live a little bit earlier today, just before we jumped on to brunch, just to say hi to our friends in London and and the rest of Southern Ontario, and and we were just speaking about commercial real estate and we were touching on how things are starting to really open up now, um, as well as. You get this vibe, right, that the entrepreneurs are really getting itchy now to get started again. Like, unfortunately, we all know people who lost their businesses. But the one the one positive that always comes out of situations like this, in my opinion, is you get to see people rebound. Right. And we have a lot of personal friends and family that is in that process excuse me, right now in terms of restarting their businesses. And some of them are not getting right back into the same business that they were in, right? And hence why we're starting to see this window, this window in commercial real estate. Why don't you just touch on that? Because, and obviously it's hot because of us just coming off the conversation. And and I'm always going to come across first because it all starts with mindset. Yeah. Uh, And we literally just covered the topic in a different way, but we'll we'll cover it our way here is we see human nature human nature and we see resiliency we see that that the human brain that all of us operate out of has we're wired to forget trauma we're wired to forget like once you you cut your you cut yourself it hurt you you went through it but the minute that it healed it's like it never happened it's like it never happened why is that for the same reason why after 9-11, and that's the analogy that I used a second ago uh, on Prime, people said nobody's going back to skyscrapers to work. Nobody's going to be doing this. Nobody's going to fly a plane again and go on vacation. Three months later, the world forgot. Not to talk about the people we forgot. We talk about the trauma. The pandemic already, it's the, the case numbers are at 300, and people are like, it's over. It's over. People are now lining up at patios, lining up uh, in order to have those safe measures that are still in place. But by the end of the summer, by the end of fall, I don't I don't care now. Now it's a a matter of time. Mm -hmm. So and you had said one word and I want you to repeat that word because this is the word that we're going to use for the driver. And that is the consumer. What consumer confidence, consumer confidence. And we saw that and we we saw that happen. um, I'm going to say November, December of 2020. Once the announcement was made that there's a vaccine coming within a month or two. Right. Um, And, and what we started to see is people that were, had their hands in their pockets waiting to get into the market. You started to see that shift. happen. Do you remember when you were telling people that real estate was on sale? Well, specifically downtown Toronto documented, it's documented everywhere. That was October, November, December. That was the lowest consumer confidence period in the market. Yep. Although the market was telling a different story that it was busy. When we were talking about the condos downtown, everybody was running for the hills, meaning, no, no, downtown will never be the same. It will be this. It'll be that. You said, I'm not going to say that we act. I'm not going to say nothing. Anymore. I don't want to rub any, any, anything into anyone's face. Yeah. The point of this exercise, you made comments. We took actions. A lot of our clients took action. And we were saying real estate's on sale. Real estate is never on sale downtown Toronto. And that's because there's too much consumer confidence from too many educated, smart people. Well, and just just basic supply and demand. Pre-COVID, you just have all these people coming into the GTA. So if you you try to find a condo at the price of November right now, you're going to pay $50,000 to $100,000 more. Well, now now you're right. I think you're about 2% lower than what the numbers were in terms of values pre-COVID for these downtown Toronto condos. We were at one point in that time frame that you're talking about, Seamus, we were at 10% below market value. 10%. Never seen this in 16 years. And so 
I think we're starting to see that space open up now in terms of uh, commercial real estate. I also think, and we can touch on this, and then we're going to bring on our guests as more as, as people sign on. I know their coffees are brewing at home. The espressos are being made. Um, and there, I mean, we get messages all the time. People you tell us what, what we're going to do eating. today yeah. about, about commercial. Mm. We're going to bring up our very good clients, um, AK yeah. and MM's okay. building. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to, I haven't spoken to them about this and it just came to me now, but yeah. it's a property on Dundas. Yeah. It's a three story office building brick and beam built in the 1920s we're going to use that as today's actual case study yeah to see how we can teach people how two million dollars were made overnight well why don't you just jump into that right away because all i was going to mention is, is our that mr jeff warren here jeff warren's here we're gonna we're gonna uh, i know jeff's patiently waiting um but why don't you touch on the commercial it gives on that case study that you're talking about. It gives some uh, uh, some time for more people to come on. I'm getting messages on the side here. Hey, we're just coming on. Okay. We want to wait. Uh, we, you know, can you hold off the conversation about accounting uh, because people obviously no have burning questions around that. So why don't no you talk about the case study in Dunda on Dunda Street? Okay, I've been looking for a building for these guys. They own a media company, uh, a very successful media company, uh, and uh, they, they had space requirements for years. Pandemic comes around. We still haven't found a property because obviously it's extremely competitive downtown to make the numbers work, to, to make it a to make it a win. So everybody wants everybody who holds gold thinks they got diamonds. Everybody who holds steel thinks they have gold, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Is it all about the lumber now? <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs> right answer about we lumber. All know what's happening with lumber. aluminum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <So>. Tariffs. <laughs> yeah. no. Um, but 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 no, so so basically. We see this property come up in July 2020. This is mid-COVID. Uh, love the property. It was listed by our good friends at Colliers. A uh, big shout out uh, to, 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 to Chris Lexton and, uh, and, and Dominic. They were massive. They were huge. Uh, we put this deal together uh, over a course of literally six months. Because when we reached out in July, they literally already produced their own offer overnight. So they had guys in the wings. And what I did is I said, boys, as we all know, this is a crazy business. If your deal doesn't come through, uh, we're here. What I did is I had one of our commercial practitioners, Gevik, shout out to Gev. Uh, I, I said, Gevik, I want you to follow this. Uh, realtors are known uh, for not following up because mm -hmm. uh, everybody's busy in this market. So I said, I want you to follow this. I want to call every 15 days, bar none, no matter what. Gevik gives him a call, sold, give him a call, sold, give him a call, sold. October 1st, gives him a call. Uh, please get Simeon on the phone. The deal is falling apart. I rally my troops. So October, I rally my client, do an analysis, do another analysis. We send a, we, we send an offer. They laugh in our face. They give us their analysis as, as to why this property should be a, a north of $7 million and why my analysis justifies $5.5 million. So, so sorry, you put in the offer for $5.5 million? I put in a letter of intent. Got it. Saying that I'm submitting to you my research. Yep. I'm submitting to you what I am using. No secrets, no nonsense. This is what this building is worth. It is worth $5.5 .5 million. Mm -hmm. They said, "All uh, no offense, Mr. Papa Elias, but yep. you're on crack. Yeah. Uh, using this research here, it's worth $7 million. Okay. So we're a million and a half part. That's a big, big, big 7.3, almost 2 million. Okay. 1.8. Okay. So, so that's a very big difference. That's, yep. that's a no deal. Yep. Okay. So I said, how can we make a deal? Mm. Because the difference in, um, in in commercial is the income. This mm. is all income-based approach. So they're saying that the income in a full building would be X. Right. And I'm saying, no, it wouldn't because yeah. I, I, I lease commercial real estate and I can't get those rates. Right. I said, how about you guarantee those rates? Exactly. And, and then I'm going to use yours because the appraiser who's going to come by after we're done needs to evaluate it. And the difference... With, with that is when the evaluation comes in and they come in at, let's call it six and a half or six, the difference above and beyond that to the purchase price is dollar for dollar. It's not leveraged dollars. So I can't tell my client put 20% down or 30% down and the rest will get from the bank. Mm. That will be up to the bank's appraisal. Back and forth, back and forth. We agree to terms. We agree to a half a million dollar um, income proposition, a, a bunch of the terms. Due diligence starts. Due diligence starts. Environmentals come in. Environmental phase one comes in. Well, it looks like there's a little bit of XYZ chemical in the ground. We have to investigate further. 
Now we got to call in for a phase two. A phase two costs forty to fifty thousand dollars. So how does a client in this market, knowing that COVID is crashing everything, have the confidence to invest fifty thousand to a deal they still don't know if they're buying? Again, expert negotiation start. We're starting to mitigate risk. That sorry seller, that if we're going to pay for this. Any cost above and beyond, bah, 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 it comes back. You have to mitigate the risk. If we walk away, you can own the property, but you're going to pay us 80% of the cost of phase two, but you can own the report. So we found creative ways to get everybody happy mm -hmm. to be able to proceed because the intent was good. The intent was to purchase and sell the building. So as long as you keep reminding people what the intent originally is and was, the war can come down. Now, what... I want to get into the mindset really quickly for two minutes, and then we're going to bring on uh, a, a Jeff as more people come on. Um, why did, why do you feel that our clients had the consumer conf? Like, why did they have the confidence to move forward with this? Were they seeing the opportunity? So, a, they're an end user in in a neighborhood that they believe in, in a neighborhood they know, in a neighborhood that they know their employees will be happy in. So, there's thirty percent of the building. But the other 60% represents an opportunity in a neighborhood that is uh, steaming hot. And I am speaking of the junction. They yeah. are in the heart of the junction on Dundas, a beautiful building that they're, they're going to recondition. And this is going to be a triple A piece of real estate, meaning triple A office, prestige brick and beam office. So when they're done with it, they are going to get top values. And they are going into an area that the junction itself, just because we we were just part of a launch, we literally just delivered in House of Assembly, yep, a project that you specifically sold a month ago, two months ago, whatever it was, yep, another seven hundred residents, yep. So the the population and density of the junction is on a it's it is an, a node identified by the city to grow. It is a node that has been approved for intensification. This morning, I just received an email from Marlin Spring indicating that Heinz, a different developer who's co-developing in there, nothing to do with them, just got their approvals. Yep. Meaning there's going to be 2,000 more dwellings. 2,000. And in total, there's a little over 8,000 coming in the next eight the, to nine years. This is 600 meters from the said property. Exactly. So we're talking about an area. So I knew these things. Yep. So when I advised my client on commercial real estate, where they should be buying. Right. If you're looking to create value, yeah. you buy here because you're going to be here for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, no matter what. So what I'm saying to you is the property that you bought, yeah. you will always identify your property because you you can move it, touch it, or, or feel it. But the rest of the neighborhood around you, you will not recognize in five years. You will think you're on the moon in 10 years and in a different universe in 20. And, and that's why it's so important. We always go back to the basics of seeing real estate in that 10-year window, 100%. right? In that 10-year window, specifically in the GTA. And you have to choose growth. Well, yeah, right? Because in the GTA, for the last 100 years, every decade, values have doubled. Now, what we've seen happen in the last, in the last decade is three and a half, four X, but let's not, let's not use that no number to when we're when we're forecasting because we don't need to well you don't need exactly if you forget even using double let's just work off a five percent year over year increase on commercial because of the in, income that's being produced as Simos just mentioned it, it works slightly different um and that's why and we were saying this a lot on prime's show earlier today that you need to deal with an expert if it's rec great if it's not that's okay we just need to make there's sure there's many amazing a hundred percent we just need to make sure that whoever and whenever you're looking into investing into real estate residential commercial commercial, industrial, any of that, that you're working with an expert, not only in that field, i.e. residential or commercial, but actually in the area as well. And asset class. Well, yeah, because imagine, imagine, imagine our, those clients were working with somebody who didn't know the junction as well as you did at the time. Yeah. Right. Because what would have happened is they wouldn't have moved forward with that deal because that agent possibly didn't or wouldn't have known about all this growth that's happening, all this, all the population that's going to be happening. Now, none of that all matters if you can make a if you make a lot of money, but you don't know how to keep it. 
None of it matters. And that's why our guest today is going to really walk us through how to keep that money. How to keep <laughs> that money. And and look, we can't get away from taxes. What does Chris Lightham say? Uh, it's not about how much you make. make yes, it's, it's about, about how much stays at home. <laughs> exactly. Shout out to Chris Lightham, broker and record of Roll of Page Signature, uh, 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 a guest of ours on a regular basis. But today, today, we are honored by Mr. Jeff Warren. How are you doing today, Jeff? Oh, he's okay. on mute. mute. Jeff, mute. you're on mute. Just I'm mute. Can you hear me now? There you go. Look, look, I think I think two of the most overused words in 2020 going into 2021 was A, unprecedented. <laughs> okay. Don't and B, uh, I think you're on mute. I think you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Right? No kidding. You think by now you get, you get used to this whole world of uh, muting and unmuting, but no, sir, not yet. So true, buddy. Last time we spoke um, to our REC insiders, it was part of our first ever, the first ever, in fact, 12 hour, 12 hour nonstop real estate marathon. Um, and you were part of it. And we had tons of amazing feedback. All, all yeah. based on, wow, Jeff was not only very valuable on the marathon, but the amount of calls that were made to you afterwards. People have been very, very happy with your service. And so if you're watching right now, um, I want you to get your questions in the comments. I'm monitoring them here on my phone. Stephen will be bringing them up on the screen let we're going to get very very tactical um and into the nitty gritty as much as we possibly can knowing that people who are watching obviously have their own personal circumstances and situations and uh, uh tyler our air traffic controller slash director of real estate concierge services will make sure that he makes the connection over to jeff and his team first and foremost but, jeff but even maybe if you can have him cover his his outlook on money, like how does he see money? Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. I just wanted to first start off with asking, how have you been doing during this time? How's your family? How's your colleagues? How's your friends? We're great, man. Honestly, life couldn't be, you know, better. Everything's everything's on the upside. Got jabbed with my second vaccine just a couple of days ago. Feeling really good. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering why I'm not sitting with you. Okay, I saw you in person when we did the marathon. Here, you guys have this beautiful. I'm seeing you before the hot dog. I got a donut with me. That's not my <laughs> breakfast here. Uh, but hey, I, hey, Jeff. Sorry, call Jeff. Jordan. Jeff, you can't. Yeah, a call Jordan. A call Jordan for sure. Yeah. Okay, he'll yeah, cater for the family. But the brunch looks great. But Seamus and I always laugh that we just we kind of sometimes have to do things last minute because we're running around. We're eating on Halloween plates still, um, as we like to make sure. We hope that, that they're the last two. You can tell. You can tell. There's this conservativeness always happening around Seamus and I that we're not willing to throw in the halloween plates we'll go buy more plates when these are done and the whole team is the whole team is on that vibe but continue buddy how no, and i will say it comes from if you come from an immigrant family shout out to you because you know what it's like to save the mcdonald's napkins you know what it's like to save the mcdonald's forks hey buddy you come to my car right now do you have any mcdonald's napkins i have i think it says more to why the why why do i have so much because McDonald's you're, napkins. You're not allowed to throw them out because, yeah. because you know you're insulting your mother in the back end. 100. <laughs> 100. Uh, so okay. continue, Jeff. Okay. Continue. Well, if, if we're just gonna give quick shout outs, I'll move fast. My donut is not just any donut, and I'll give a shout out to Christine, the lady at Importance, who makes a custom double dip donut for me every Saturday morning, just so that I get you know that extra little perk in my day. So so I'm doing pretty well over here. But anyway, that's I love it. But anyway, to answer your question. Life has been great. We're, we've been very busy, uh, helping a lot of clients out, obviously, navigate some, some tricky water with different subsidies and all the things. Um, but I think that there's a level of optimism in the air, like you guys were mentioning before, that we just haven't seen in a while. I mean, the, the, the city was bumping last Friday when all these sort of restrictions got lifted. Euro was starting up. This session right here is a perfect precursor leading into Portugal, Germany. This, you know, it's just very good things are happening. Father's Day weekend. I'm sure you guys are going to get showered with love uh, as soon as this thing's over, and hopefully you deserve it over the you know the rest of the weekend. But life, life's good, my friends. Well, I'm a little disappointed today from uh, the result of uh, the England Scotland game from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, my family goes back uh, uh, to England. The roots are in England, and uh, just still, still a little disappointed. You brought it back up again. Um, I was over it. 
today in the morning because I was getting ready for that Germany Portugal game myself as well. That's playing right now. No, I think I think it starts at twelve. Yeah, France yeah. just played Hungary as well. Yeah. Um, look, Simos actually uh, uh, had a great question. Simos, you were going to ask Jeff about his thoughts about yeah. money. Like so, so you phrased that question. Before we even go to, uh, to before we even go to any Q and A, before we we talk about real estate and tax, what is your view on money? What is your fundamental? What's your founding principles of you're an accountant. You're there to, to counsel people on how to hold on and take advantage of what's available to them and, and keep the most that they can while preparing for their future moves. That, that, that's what a strategic accountant does. That's who Absolutely. you are. What is your take on money? When you wake up in the morning or when you're putting your own life or slash business plan together, what's your outlook on, on money and tax? So, I mean, I think, that, I think you know, like, if you were to ask an accountant what our objectives are, we've got, we've got, we've got twofold objectives, right? Number one would be trying to reduce tax. And obviously within the, the guidelines that are given to us, but we want to keep taxes as low being aware of, you know, what available deductions are there, what tools and tricks and pieces are in our pocket to do that. Number two is deferring tax, right? How can we defer tax? Because if you can, if you can pay tax um, at, you know, a, a lower rate up front, and, and continue to build equity, that's more money sitting in your pocket that you obviously have to leverage. And, and being in real estate, you I, I understand better than most, you know, the, the importance of being able to leverage funds and build on growing, you know, if you can earn seven points and you're paying three, right, then, then obviously you're, you're, you're winning across the board, right? And so that's, that's generally how, you know, my, my wife and I have set up our own investment portfolio with regards to real estate. Uh, you know, across Toronto now we have five properties, and, uh, and and we work really hard to sustain that. That's not an easy job. Um, you know, not, nothing is for free, but it is, is you know something that really gets me going in real estate. And I, and I like to relay those experiences that I have over to the clients to the best of my ability, right? And uh, and so that that is generally how I see it. I, I I live by what I preach in terms of uh, I try and keep a relatively humble lifestyle. Um, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm constantly trying to look at what that next move is. Um, and real estate has been something that has just become that passion for me, right? And so that, that's how I approach it personally. And I try and relay that. And it's different for everyone. That, that, that's the thing about, you know, giving you know, presentations or discussions like this to, you know, the REC Nation is everyone's circumstances are a little bit different. Right. And so you got to understand what's going on in the personal tax situation so that you can advise accordingly. Right. And so it's uh, it's just just but that, that's what's worked for me. And I love it. There's a couple of things that definitely that need to be unpacked uh, in terms of what you just said. But I first wanted to just remind everybody who's watching and listening right now that the importance of always building your real estate all star team. And we generally always start off with. I mean, we like to think you and I are the most important in the process. But well, we're definitely not. We're definitely not. Um, and our families remind of remind us of that daily. Daily. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're all in the same boat. Um, on the first, in my opinion, the first person people should always be sitting down with is an independent mortgage broker because he or she is always going to be able to tell you what you actually qualify for. What's the cost of borrowing? What's the cost of actually the the full carrying of a property? Is it better to go variable? Is it better to go fixed? Then you have, in my opinion, again, the real estate broker, because he or she is actually going to take you out shopping. They're the ones who are going to be speaking about population growth. Where should you invest? And then we normally talk about the real estate lawyer. And then we talk about contractors. And then later on, it's like, okay, we should be speaking to the accountant. I actually think it should be much earlier on because and Jeff, you can speak about this, that the setting up of the structure at the start, in my opinion, is very important. It's, a, and, it's actually and, everything. Right. And we and, and most people miss that. On that note, Jeff, what are some of the mistakes that you have seen investors make? Right. So because we can go on and on for days about the successes of uh, uh, that we've seen. Thanks, Simos, that we've seen real estate investors uh, um, experience. But I, I like to get into the mistakes and the failures because then people who are watching just avoid those. It's quite easy. We can cut 
We can cut a lot of uh, a success in half, the time in half, as long as we avoid hitting our heads against the wall because others have. So what are some some of those those, those top two, three, four mistakes that you have seen um, uh, investors make when when setting up a structure? So I think it comes down to dialogue. It's a good question. Thanks for asking it. So I, I think a lot of it comes down to dialogue, speaking with someone, be it, you know, your your because everyone's circumstances are different, right? You cannot have, you cannot necessarily talk to your neighbor and say, oh, this is what I did. Oh, that will automatically apply to me, right? And, and you start off, I get a lot of conversations that start that way. People trying to do their due diligence, chatting with their neighbors, chatting with their coworkers, et cetera. And, and it's incredible how there are little bits and pieces of information that are different, right? You know, your marginal time, you could be earning the exact same job. Right, but paying different taxes because it just so happens, you know, your coworker has uh, an elderly father at home, and he's claiming the DTC disability tax certificate, sure. and so he's got different deductions in his tax return. Right, and these are things that you're not talking about on a day in day out basis. You kind of have to drop your pants, take off your shirt, show us what's going on in your financial background, so that an appropriate plan can be devised for you. Right. I also think people make the mistake of not really knowing what their end game is for their real estate transaction, right? Like, you know, where and that, and that just comes down to planning, planning and strategic and with intent planning. Totally. Exactly. And you absolutely nailed it, right? Because, you know, do you want to just, you know, do you want to buy, have sort of like a passive income on the side while you work and then pull money out as you retire? Or are you looking to build this, you know, empire of, of you know, real estate and, and thinking about, the associated legacy of this, I want my kids to be a real estate mongrel and therefore I want to build up a structure that's not going to flip down to them in that in that structure, right? And so it, it, it is sort of looking at what the attention is. And that might change. That might pivot over time and you can always adjust, but there's a cost to adjusting, right? And so when you say a mistake, right? Like someone can buy a property personally and then it eventually makes sense to move it to a corporation for whatever reason. I'm not saying that it always makes sense to do that because it certainly doesn't. But if they do want to move it into a corporation, sure, we can get out of income tax. You do what we call a special Section 85 rollover. You can move it and get a tax lawyer, cost you a bit of money. You get hit with land transfer tax. 100%. Right? You're so not we'll getting away with land transfer. <laughs> right? And just to- yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. It's just, it's, I mean, it's, but that, that is, that is kind of some of the things that we, so it's like this holistic planning. And I, I like to think of real estate in sort of three stages, right? Being the, the, the purchase process, how are you setting up that structure? You, you know, that the overall maintenance, how are we, how are we maintaining this property? What are we doing to make sure that you're, you're you know, extracting the best value, keeping as much of it to your point in your pocket? And then we have to also look at, well, what's the disposition of this? You're either going to sell it or you're going to die, right? And and not to be morbid, but that's the reality of it. And so, how do we get around, you know, planning for that? How how do we get around uh, uh, making sure that you know whatever that you know intended legacy that you have is is going to actually achieve it, right? And that you're not going to develop a whole ton of fights amongst your kids or the property culture that you've built up here. And you'd be amazed at, 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 at like how how often this type of thing can happen. Right. So, okay, but, but like you truly, truly brought a reality that I, I've never heard it that way before. There's two ways out of a property you're either going to sell it or you're going to die. Yep. Uh, end period. Well, well, yeah, because even if you refinance it, you still own it. You At one point, it. you're going to have to no, sell no, it. No, I, no, I just, I just love it. But yeah. it, it's funny that it comes from the tax man, <laughs> the reverse tax man, because he, he, that's what he sees. It's tax yeah. and death are the only two certainties. Hundred percent. So, like, yeah, yeah. if you're living, you're taxing. Yeah. If you're not, you're not. <laughs> so, I love it. I just, wow, okay. what, what a perspective! And doesn't that put such a mad urgency to planning? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Doesn't that put that it, it turns on the light a little bit, doesn't it? Well, I mean, in terms of planning, by far the most asked question we get after how's the market is to corp or not to corp. Absolutely. And I know you get this from our insiders and investors all the time. And so I really want to take I want you to take your time walking us through what are the well, let me let me rephrase this. Should you always put your real estate holdings in a corporation you should never always do anything 
Got never it. I always. love There's that. Never and always the answer. I love that. Right. And that and that and you and 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 so you you can ask the opinions from a lot of people and, and I suggest you said you know you you ask people that you trust and see. But again, everyone's circumstances can be a little bit different. And and little differences can have big impacts on the plan, right? And so yeah, the personal ownership versus the corporate ownership. Myself, I like keeping things simple in general, right? Uh, like I, I always try and preach simplicity to clients. Uh, I don't like to move them into something that's more complicated than it needs to be, uh, because because you know like I'm never trying to upsell, if you will, right? I'm, I'm you know I'm fortunate that I got I got seemingly more work than time, so so I'm never trying to push someone into a corporate structure where it doesn't necessarily make sense to them, right? Um, so. When we look at real estate from a personal perspective, what happens is you own property, be it in your name, you're, you're, you're in your partner's name, you know, your spouse, or, or be it, you know, you go into some sort of partnership with, with another individual, um, and you're genuinely just owning property independent, right? This is going to get taxed in what we call a T776 in your personal tax return. Very easy thing for you to Google, and you can see where you put in your income and where you would put in your expenses, right? One of the really nice things that we get by putting it into your personal tax return is that you can uh, you can deduct, like if you have profit, it gets, goes into your tax return, it gets taxed at your marginal rate. Well, now all of a sudden we're seeing the difference between you and your neighbor. Again, if they've got an elderly dependent or other, some other forms of deductions, that might be pushing them into a lower tax bracket, and so they don't mind seeing some of that rental profit going into their personal tax return because it's at a lower rate, right? Versus you, you might be earning more than them. I mean, we never know what our, our co-workers are necessarily earning, right? You might be yourself at a much higher tax rate, and so any profit coming from a rental property, you're just getting, you know, you're getting shelled on at, at like a 45 or 50% tax rate, right? Um, when we're looking at a rental property, obviously, we're, we're trying to be aware of what the expenses are and we're trying to keep, you know, all of the relevant expenses and making our clients aware of what expenses are available to them so that they can continue to write down their income as low as possible. A perfect tax return is basically not earning any money, right? It, it, it's something whereby your, your uh, income from the rental property is getting reduced by the applicable expenses associated with that property, right? Um, if you do have losses, and we're seeing a lot of rental properties right now in, in loss position, right, whereby the rental revenue that's coming in is the, the expenses are in excess of that, right? Um, in those situations, what we can use is that the loss from the rental property gets deducted against other income. So you're actually generating a tax savings in your tax return. All things apart, right? If you work for a job, you get a T4, your employer should be taking off the appropriate amount of taxes. Right. And and the perfect tax return is zero, whereby your employer is taking all the right amount of payroll tax off. Right. If you throw a rental property in there and that rental property loses, let's say, two thousand dollars, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a tax refund based on that two thousand dollar loan. Right. And, um, and and it's one of the things we saw this year with uh, with all the SERP and whatnot is, is there wasn't a lot of tax being taken off. And so I'm sure a lot of the users out here that if you were collecting CDRB, you know, you usually would be used to a, a tax return. Sometimes you had to pay. And everyone's circumstances, again, are different, right? So there's no broad brush solution here. But anyway, the point of what I'm saying is that the, the simple structure for a rental property <laughs> falls into your personal tax return. And, uh, and and there's a, a ton of benefit to holding it in there. Uh, and a lot of people do that. And I coach a lot of people to do that. So go ahead, Simmons. Jeff, and you've gone really, really uh, deep with it, which I appreciate because I got some uh, some very good value out of what you just mentioned. Yeah. But I wanted to I, I wanted to take take a, just one step back. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm 41 years old and I've owned real estate uh, for. You're 41. I'm very young. Oh. Yes, I'm very young. I didn't know that. I'm actually. talking young. You're 40. The Ute. I turned. Yeah, you're 41. I just turned 41. Yeah, yeah, you're 41. So with that being said, I have owned real estate for 18 of my uh, 23 years uh, as an adult. And I have reaped the benefits of real estate now for every single one of those days, meaning that when I speak to my accountant, uh, we go down the path of what I spent to hold on to the property. For every special assessment of a condominium that I had to put a dollar in 
for that condominium to raise in value or maintain its value, I got a credit on my taxes. For every single time I treated my properties like an ATM and refinanced them and have never paid a single dollar of tax on that money. And I have grown my portfolio exponentially to the number of properties we have under control today. I have used the personal structure. We do hold uh, other properties and bear trustee. There's literally three to five very common ways to hold property and, and different reasons for each class. Jeff, why would somebody or when in the path would you recommend that it is time to limit your liability, Ms. Mr. So-and-so. It is time to take a look at this structure because at this point I do feel there is a benefit to not keep things simple, but to further your interest by using a corp. For sure. So a corporation comes into play, like you mentioned one thing I really like that, which is legal liability associated with Right now, you, you can offset legal liability with, with insurance, at least to a degree, in terms of being able to, uh, you know, God, heaven forbid, someone tries to pull a lawsuit or attack with a lawsuit, you, you have insurance coverage that would protect you against that. And, so and, just to, and just to confirm, that's home insurance. If somebody does, if somebody slips and falls on one of your investment, uh, one of your investment properties. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so including a good insurance broker uh, to your, you know, your team of, of individuals that you're referencing is there. And that's, that's important that you understand what these policies entail and cover. Right. Now, if you move real estate, residential real estate into a corporate structure, there are a couple of rules in place for you to get favorable income tax. And that's kind of where you step back and you've got to look at what your overall objective is here, right? Because if you are, are looking to, to build that legacy and, and have an active business that involves real estate investment, residential real estate uh, rental investment, right? Then you have to have some of the criteria in place to make that happen. One of those criteria to make it active business income would be to have five employees working for you in that corporation, right? That's a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of, like you have to be fully committed to getting into that structure, right? And doing that. And if you get into that structure, then you get taxed at, you know, a 12% rate, you know, in, in that very low active business material tax rate. That's really good for you in terms of building up retained earnings and continuing to reinvest in your portfolio, right? Now, there's other ways that you can do. You can partner with other sort of groups of investors to get to that critical number of five. Um, and and there's, there's ways to do that, probably a little more complicated than we necessarily want to touch on right now. But there are ways to get around it. But it kind of steps back to that first thing that we talked about being like, well, what, what is your big picture objective, right? Like for me personally, that's not what I want. I, I run an accounting practice and I'm really happy with that. Uh, and, and I am almost a, a moonlight real estate investor. And, uh, and and I'm thrilled with it. And it was quite frankly, to your point, Simone, like one of the best decisions my wife and I ever made, right? It's just, we have absolutely, I, I couldn't be happier with, with the with the direction that's taking me, right? Um, if I was to want to flip all of my properties that I hold personally into a corporate structure because I want to do that, that's when there's, there's prohibitive tax planning that comes in place. And that's why it's important to try and really give yourself a gut check up front, right? And say, you know, if I'm going to be trying to roll this property in, I can avoid the capital gains tax. But in Toronto, you're not getting away from the land transfer tax, right? Or the double land transfer tax for that. No, yeah, 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 exactly. Provincial the double, and the double land transfer tax, exactly. Now, if you're a property flipper, I would, you know, you can try and do that in a corporate structure and try and make that an active business of flipping. And you're not going to get capital gains tax on transferring those properties. It's almost like a, a real estate investment. You're holding your your real estate as inventory to be, you know, improved and flipped. But the, it, it, it really does tie down to what your objective is, right? And so, um, you know, there is, you know, by keeping it in your personal tax return, it adds a lot of complexity to your personal tax return in terms of, you know, each rental property gets its own separate statement and all of a sudden your tax return can get pretty darn thick, right? And, and could attract attention. Um, you know, moving it into a corporate tax return is a completely separate tax return because a corporation, as, as you know, your users would know, is a separate entity, right? And so that's a completely separate tax return only associated on the Schedule 50, which is your social insurance number tying you to that corporation as the shareholder. 
So it, it, um, the corporation, there, there might be the, the opportunity for going into a corporate structure. You just have to have your eyes open in terms of what's that marginal tax rate going to be in the corporation, which is hot, right? 40 to 43 to 50 percent in the corporation, depending where you are, right? And so, um, and that all ties into, well, how profitable are these properties to begin with, right? And so what are your metrics? And you, and you run metrics before you go into an investment to know what your net operating income is, what's your Damn rate, rate you do, property, right? And and then obviously, you know, the, the two sort of dovetail together and that's how you sort of build a comprehensive plan. The best way to answer that question for someone is to look at, well, what is the personal circumstance? What's your personal marginal rate, right? Because if you're a big earner, it's not really attractive to have, you know, net positive rental income on the top of it, right? Um, well, well, hang on one second, Jeff. Yeah. What, what is there? Like when you say big earners, is, is there a certain number that somebody might cross over and say, okay, once I get over X, a hundred thousand dollars a year, fifty? Like what? What is that number in that that you might use to calculate? So I would say anything over. I mean, at a hundred thousand dollars, you're paying tax on a dollar after that around forty three percent in Ontario, right? Um, so, so, you know, that, that's at a hundred thousand dollar mark, right? I mean, at, uh, a hundred and, you know, and it, it kind of goes up sub, 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 substantially yeah. until 55%, you know, a, a, around $250,000, which I have heard of, sorry, but, um, but so yeah, there, yes, there is, we, we do get very penalized to succeed in Ontario. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot. Now, I mean, there are other things that kind of go into the operation of a rental property. Like when we look at like costs incurred needed to sustain a property, right? And there are, you know, all of the expenses that go into the day in, day out operations, right? So, you know, your utilities, your property tax, your your repairs and maintenance and whatnot, right? Um, then there are other types of expenses that would be considered capital properties associated with Right. And so the difference between an operating expense would be something that would be a short term in nature versus a capital expense would be something that would um, it be an investment in the property that would otherwise improve the life of the property or improve the ability of that property to earn money. Right. Um, and so using, you know, using an example from my life. Right. We, you know, we, we repaired a fence. We repaired some fence for us. OK, that we use as a deductible expense. Two years later, you know. A big storm came and we realized we had to replace that. Thing. Well, that became a capital uh, improvement on that property. And so there are ways that we can um, reduce the taxable income in the current year by doing something like depreciating the property itself. Uh, that's called CCA, capital cost amortization. You want to be aware of what you're doing and you want to have a dialogue with whoever's helping you prepare your tax returns. Because again, CCA might make sense in one person's tax return, depreciating a property, but it might not make sense in someone else's. And so going into it with eyes open really helps the, uh, the, the client make the informed decision and, and, and get the most out of their tax return and squeeze the most dollars out of that. Well, it's, it's so important. Again, I can't emphasize this enough to, to make sure that you sit with an accountant because what we hear a lot of when we're sitting down with investors at like that first initial consultation, Simos, is that, well, I want to look at how much cash flow this property produces and I'm only looking at how, like, how much am I going to net and I'm only going to make a decision if I'm going to move forward with a strategy, higher level, or property dependent on what cash flow I'm going to get at the end of the month. I'm going to look at my rental income. I'm going to take away all my expenses. What's left? What we preach for ever since we got started in this business is you need to look at the whole pie, not just a piece of all it, of it, because the cash flow to us is just one piece of it. You need to look at the passive appreciation in this investment. You got to look at what the principal pay down is going to be. Can you actively appreciate the, the, the property? But then the last one, and to me, the most important one is the tax strategies, because yes, I'm going to make, you know, a a thousand dollars a month on it. But if I'm paying tax on it, that thousand dollars a month, positive cash flow, and now I'm down to whatever it is, 600 bucks a month. Well, it's not the same when I was working the numbers at a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars a month. And so for me, like I just right now, I'm in the process of doing a refinance on my, my first condo that I ever bought. 
it's going to cost me $200 a month out of my pocket after I pull out tax-free. I'm pulling out a little over $200,000, okay, out of this condo. And now the new mortgage, it's going to cost me $200 a yeah. month because the rental income is not going to cover sure. all my expenses. I'm loving it because as of what Jeff spoke about, that $2,400 a month, uh, $2,400 a year that I'm paying, I need that as a write-off. I need to use that. I'm going to go to Jeff and say, Jeff, just so you know, it's costing me $200, uh, $200 a month. And he's going to say, no problem, Jazz. Let's use this as a write-off. Correct? Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You want to trace the money. You want to make sure that what you're doing with the funds. Are in, but yes, you want to be here. <laughs> You want to be trying to maximize your uh, your interest expense as much as you can there and, and be leveraging what you can. So absolutely. All, all the interest that you're going to pay, every fee that you pay to break, every single expense and penny that is going to be incurred out of that transaction, which is an investment property, is going to be given back to the accountant to be written off as an expense uh, as a result of this transaction. The funds that you will take, again, as Jeff said, depending on what you're doing with that money, is going to be used again to your advantage, whether in the acquisition of a new property, whether in the assistance and expansion or stabilization of the other properties, where if you have to, for example, have huge capex, let's say you own a strip mall and you need to redo the asphalt, that property doesn't have enough equity in it to, to pull its own weight and you take the money from here and you loan it over there all these cross property transactions all can relate into mass tax savings at the end of the year with a property that's going to be shining with new equity as value was created just all these millions well, that's what the scenarios. big boys do right we talk we, we always this laugh here at shops at don do. mills with cadillac fairview <coughs> they're always fixing stuff here that doesn't even need to be fixed. It just doesn't came, make you know, it doesn't you, make sense. You spoke about the asphalt. Yeah. This like didn't need outside. Right now they're fixing the driveway here, the the, the parking lot. Doesn't need to be. But what are they doing? They're, they 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 have certain grants that they have to use. They have to That's use. Right. They ha they're taking the money from. I think they own uh, Yorkdale as well, right? Yep. These guys do. Um, and Eaton Center, yep. and so they're just so Yorkdale's moving. Oxford. Yorkdale's, uh, Oxford. Yorkdale's Oxford. So, but the Eaton Center and Sherway Gardens. This is all uh, all Cadillac Fairview. They're just moving money around, and so knowing what some of these big, big, big corporations do, big companies do, we can definitely learn from it. Now, as I'm watching, who's on our on our brand and just kind of monitoring it and and back to everybody who's watching please throw your questions in the comments we are monitoring it i want to put and we want to put jeff a little bit on the hot seat and 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 i know he's best at rapid fire as i always like to say but jeff there's a lot of newer insiders and newer investors we made tons of mistakes when we were starting and one of the main mistakes that we made was we were never organized we were really really bad at organizing uh, not not the structure only, but just like all these expenses, the keeping the receipts. We were busy. And, and, and listen, we were building our careers. I do have an excuse for it yeah. because we were in the busiest time of our lives trying to build ourselves out. But as a result of what we learned and how much money we left on the table as a result of that, nobody in this audience has the excuse we did. Uh, Meaning, I'm telling you, it was a mistake. I am telling you, we should have been more organized to take full accountability for it. I know why it happened. Yeah. But there's no excuse for it. Well, we weren't also experts at it, right? But we no, tried no. to we tried to do some yeah. of the stuff no, on our own. We had no problem putting six hours overtime to do showings and sell more property. Right. But we had a huge problem putting half hour overtime to organize a couple receipts or take the goddamn receipt and put it in your pocket and save it. Well, one one so, thing that I always remember that we did probably that Jeff was gonna agree that we were definitely doing it wrong. Like we had two properties, income properties, and same bank accounts. The money was coming in, the rental income to the same bank account. Expenses were going out. It was a disaster when we got started. So if there's anything that you could, just one small hack for somebody who has their first property and is moving on to their second, label that account at 123 Main Street and then 124 Main Street, have the rental income come in to that account, have all your expenses go out because then at the end of the year, yeah, what's quarterly, the all of that stuff, you can literally just send over because now we're organized and God, does it feel nice just to send a Google Drive over to the accountants and say, here you go. Have at her. Have at her. 
It's do, your, do your job. Jo- do your job. Do your job. <laughs> do your job. And let us go. <laughs> let us go help more clients. Let us go pick up more properties. Jeff, what are some of those those tips that uh, you can tell the early investors to make sure that they do? You guys are making my heart a flutter here with all of this <laughs> organization talk. Like you, you, you can't, you can't be, uh, you, you couldn't be, I couldn't be more turned on by this. Like you mean you you mean you don't appreciate a grocery bag full of dirty receipts? Oh my being god! Dropped off at your front door. <laughs> those inevitably go to the bottom of the pile during April when it when it's the crunch, the crunch, with the crunch, right? And uh, and and I do still get you know the the, the shoe box that that is like just totally beat up that needs to be ironed. These receipts and then all the craziness that comes with it. Um, but we certainly have way more tools available to us. And, and I think it's, it, it, you know, you guys are very humble in, in, in explaining. I mean, I would say actually the first rental properties that we purchased and before we developed our systems um, were, were very similar in terms of it. It was just a, a, a mess of receipts that were kind of flying around everywhere. And, and it is developing those systems, be it if you're, you know, you're a paper guy or a digital guy using resources to stay organized. And I say tracing numbers through. If you're drawing equity out, you want to trace where that money is going because that's an important element in terms of backing up your deductions, right? And and so I am big on trying to document, document, document. I go as far as saying, listen, if you are going to be doing some repairs and maintenance, you're replacing some windows on a rental property, right? Take pictures of the old ones first. Right? Take pictures of the new one. If there's something that's damaged, take some pictures of it and hold it onto it. In the event that this year, I like the, you know, a model. Someone said to me recently, like, I like to plan like I'm going to be audited tomorrow. Right? And so um, if I'm going to be audited tomorrow, what do I need to back myself up? We all have smartphones now, right? It is super easy to take pictures. They all go up to our Google Drive. Then you can shift it over to whatever. Uh, you know, Dropbox account or whatever. I use Dropbox personally, but uh, it goes to whatever, you know, appropriate folder that you have for those things. So in the event that you need to make reference to them, you can reference them down the road, right? Um, In terms of, you know, tools that are available, um, it can be, you know, a lot of people that do things with spreadsheets. Each rental property has its own bank account, right? Um, You store all of your receipts via, you know, with some apps. And so there's some great apps. Expensify. There's wave accounting. There's one called Neat Desk, Shoebox, or Seat Bank. You, you know, you just Google it and you'll see it. a whole series of tools or apps available to you where you basically take a picture of your receipt, scan it in, and it saves it up to a folder and gets allocated accordingly. And those are digital receipts. Right. Uh, again, maybe we'll make a list uh, when we sent the summary of the brunch out next week. Uh, every brunch to our, our thousands of uh, in our audience who can't make it on Saturday for live at 1030. Everybody in the database uh, it get, gets a recording and, and maybe we'll make some of those suggestions, Jeff, uh, of some of the apps, the organizing apps. For sure. Uh, you, you know, give us your top tips on organizing. Give us your top tips and we'll get those in the body of the email. So everybody can get that same value of the people that were here today. Yeah, like right now we use um, uh, QuickBooks. Quick, quick we, we, we use QuickBooks for you know our business, actual real estate business uh, here at REC Canada. But we also use it for our income properties because we can um, also track kilometers and gas every yeah. time we go it, from it, the it, office it, to it, one of those properties. And planning to be audited. 100%. Why do we need that tracker? Because it's one thing to say, oh, no, I live here and I work there. and That's what I did. No, prove it. Yep. Prove it. Nothing, worse, yeah. nothing worse than trying to go back and do an auto log, you know, down yeah. the road, right? And trying to dig for gas receipts and be like, oh, I drove here because I got this gas receipt from Vaughn, right? Or whatever. But, 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 but there's apps now that literally track your yeah. Google Calendar mm-hmm. to the Miles app, tying your business trip to your calendar. Like stuff yeah. is getting advanced, guys. There's there's geniuses out there all over the world working on the next breakthrough app. Well, for an app to be a breakthrough, they need to create value in someone's life. That yeah. makes my life easier. Now I don't have to think about it. If my phone is a tracker anyways, regardless, so like literally your life is tracked. So if it's going to be tracked and this is the beacon, well, make it to work for me. Save me some money. Absolutely. So, so just like what we were saying earlier, like we started a mess. Now every Friday in this office, Jazz has a meeting that runs through every bill that comes through. Here's T- the TD visa, the, the 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 bank visa, and this is the one that I just found out today that Simos's credit card, the company credit card that he has, 
was a lot higher than the one Jazz has. You know and I so, mean, literally, if Steven had recorded the brunch, if you had the, the start of the brunch, because we were off air, but I thought maybe we caught it on air. I'm like, see, well, so what's going on here? And he's like, no, 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 no. I didn't really spend it. It Anyways, wasn't me. Different topic. It wasn't different me. Day. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, a couple of things that, as I mentioned earlier, Jeff, that I wanted to. Right, Harbor 60. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. On the patio yeah. of Harbor 60. Um, I wanted to chat. Um, uh, and I mentioned, sorry, that I wanted to un- unpack a few things that you mentioned about you, you used you use the word flipping a home. So I get a lot of calls. Simos gets a lot of calls. Our team gets a lot of calls and says, OK, I want to buy a home. I want to buy a condo. OK. Um, and, and and sometimes it's a new build condo and sometimes it's a resale. And I'm going to uh, uh, do some renovations to it. I'm going to do some renovations and then I'm going to flip this house. OK. Our our response back has always been the same, will always be the same. Why are we flipping it? Let's hold on to it. Let's refinance. But some clients are like, no, I want to flip it. Can we just walk through a little scenario? Okay. And, 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 and educate people on what the tax implications are. This way they can make an educated and informed decision themselves. So you buy a house for $500,000, you buy a condo for $500,000 a year later, a year later, they sell it for six hundred thousand. Okay, a hundred thousand dollar profit. They never lived in it. It was it was an income property, or maybe they didn't even rent it out. What? Let's unpack that whole scenario for our clients. Five hundred thousand. What happens to the profit? So what happens to the hundred thousand? Let's say they spent a hundred. Yeah. And now they sell it for seven hundred. They made a hundred thousand. Yeah. Is that income? Is that capital gains? What is it? And what do we want to pay? Yeah. Because that word capital gains, some people think it's a bad word, but let's talk about that. Capital gains would be the favorable treatment, obviously, on that on that gain, because um, you know, capital gains, and you should never, never be afraid of, of capital gains. Capital gains is one of the more safe. Just repeat that again. When you hear cap, yes, because sometimes when others are at cocktail parties and dinner parties, they think they know what they're talking about. And so now I want my insiders and our insiders to know. When you hear the word capital gains, and if that's what you're paying, that is a good thing. That's what we want to pay. Continue, Jeff. Absolutely. So, so a capital gain is is as it stands right now in treated. We were all really watching the budget back in April to see if there was going to be changes to this because as it stands right now, capital gains are taxed at a 50 percent inclusion rate. What that means is that if you buy a property, uh, I can't remember the exact number. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. You buy for five, you sold it for six. Six. Let's say, you have a hundred thousand dollar capital or gain on that property. What would happen is, from a tax level capital gain perspective, uh, only fifty thousand of that hundred thousand dollars would be taxed. If this is being done in your personal tax return, um, ultimately what that would mean is that fifty thousand dollars would be taxed at your marginal rate, um, be, be it whatever it is, right? Um, now. The CRA might take a, an interpretation on that, and, they, and they've been watching people doing this. If there's a history of, of doing this, whereby they think you are in the business of flipping real estate, right? Where you are consistently showing these transactions as such, they're going to step back and say, wait a second, this is not you buying a capital asset and, uh, and selling it. This is you in the business of trying to flip real estate. And flipping real estate um, would ultimately become a business income at which point. Now, now all of a sudden that, that $100,000 becomes taxable as business income at $100,000 in your, in your name there, right? And so um, it, it's something that the CRA is giving a lot of attention to. Um, and, and that is that they want to make sure that, that there is no avoidance being taken place um, in, in the personal tax situation. So, it, I mean, it's, it, it's tough to give a broad brush answer because you have to look at the sort of transaction history associated with an individual, right? But um, but you're, you're right. Capital gains does get, it gets a dirty name associated with it. But in fact, capital gains inclusion right now is, is, is excellent. And we're hoping it doesn't go up. The, the concern with, with the, the budgets that, that we're seeing is that, you know, capital gains may rise to a 75% inclusion rate. And don't quote me on this. These are all just things that we're seeing kind of floating around out there, right? Same with, you know, changes to principal residence rules was another one that people were talking about um, and we're hold, putting a holding period in on that. So we, we as tax professionals continue to monitor this environment. That didn't change this year. We also breathed, a, a, you know, a, a side relief on the thing. But, uh, but that, that's where we're, we're looking at. Capital gains can get a bad look because, uh, you know, and not to bring it back to death, but if you have a big disposition, 
at the end of your life, right? The, the, the day you die, the CRA deems to you to have sold everything, right? That you own. Well, that can be a lot, right? Like if, if you have 10 properties and they all get disposed of and you've been holding them for 40 years, well, those gains will, will become substantial, right? And so it is, um, it, I mean, no tax is, is looked at as desirable, um, but, you know, you, you shouldn't be afraid of capital gains tax with the current inclusion rates. Well, look, I mean, at the end of the day, as we've obviously spoke about, there's two things you're not getting away from here in Canada, for sure. That's for sure. Um, is death and taxes. It's not about not paying taxes. It's about minimizing them and how much you can actually defer. My boy, Jeff, thank you so much for your time today, buddy. This was huge for anyone who wants to discuss their personal situation. Just shoot an email to info at recanada.com. That's info at recanada.com. I've said it a thousand times. We make it very easy, very, very easy. Just put in the subject line, tax man and we're gonna get you in touch with jeff look he likes that look at that beautiful smile um we're just gonna make sure that we put you, just you gave me in hot flash memories of the cash cash man. man i know that's why i said it i said it that way and a, tax huge, man. and a huge shout out 100%. to mr oliver who is a client of the rec <laughs> mr. Oliver Jewelers so, 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 so <laughs> cash man tax man we love you all <laughs> we love you all well but uh but oliver thank you one of them that's a tangent you're going to go off of. <laughs> um, but yes, Jeff, thank you so much, buddy. Um, again, it's a beautiful, beautiful day here in Toronto. Make sure you enjoy the weekend. Um, also, you know, you, you, you can handle the donuts. So keep on, keep on we can. supporting. Yeah. Seamus and I can um, keep on supporting the local Timmy's um, and then, and every other shop. Um, look, a lot of businesses are starting to come back and start opening up. See most of your restaurant in Yorkville, Kibo Sushi. Um, the patio is bumping and it's open. open. It's open. Um, go <laughs> back, go support, go help out these local businesses. We've been saying it a lot here on the brunches during the lockdown that the big boys, the Costco's, the Walmart's, the Starbucks, they're, they're, they're going to be perfectly fine with or without us. Um, let's go. Let's go help those local businesses as much as we can. You, you know what? Stick to your neighborhood. Like for the first couple months, just put the, the put the blood back in, in in the neighborhood. Yes. Stick to your your specific. Forget my neighborhood and anybody's yeah. neighborhood. Yep. Go to your neighborhood. Yep. Support the flower shop. Go buy some flowers for your wife, for your husband, for your partner. Go go buy some some brunch in your neighborhood. Get those neighborhoods back solid. Let let's see the sunshine and the smiles come through those faces. I agree, buddy. I agree. Um, in two weeks from now, we are going to be launching an exclusive opportunity. Um, it's happening not next Saturday, obviously, as brunches will happen live on Facebook every other Saturday, uh, six to eight times a year. You get to see the Greek and the Indian get really, really loud, and some would say obnoxious uh, about an opportunity that we're excited about. This is something, in fact, we haven't launched an opportunity in a month and a half to two months because we've been waiting specifically for this location right by transit. This is going to happen in two weeks from now. Make sure everyone watches your inbox because, as always, we have first absolute absolute first access are pricing. you going to be a complete terrible word and give no hints no nothing nothing wow nothing nothing the nothing. greek would have been much nicer yeah. i would have given yeah. something yeah no clearly my boy jazz no because evil. i want i want everyone You're to evil. come back uh next saturday for everybody who's watching live and watching the recording you heard it already um you guys know these brunches are set up for all education 85 to 90 percent of our brunches are all education we have nothing to sell you but then when we do have an opportunity we're going to tell you up front like full transparency peeling back the curtains we are launching an opportunity the checkbooks are not going to be safe that day next not next saturday the following saturday you're going to have an opportunity to make some money and invest into an opportunity that is is by far yeah. by far uh, uh the one that we've been waiting for well, after our, our last launch it's I, top I, top I, shelf I, I, and we don't say that we you know we get 50 60 at our desk um and this is the one that we're well, going to be the, launching the, the, next. the thing is we kind of put our money where our mouth is like this specific developer this specific site is more than likely uh, going to be our second uh, 
personal with him uh w- with him like i mean th- this is one that we're going to be going in with uh just like we did the last well, because one. the down payment structure is phenomenal just every, everything everything is phenomenal yep. so so the location the transit the this the that so i do say get do get excited uh invite uh somebody yes. that you care for uh why because we're going to have enough access typically we we struggle to get enough inventory to service uh our deep investor database in this case i have literally worked what 45 days with them now Mm -hmm. uh to to get enough inventory so there will be nobody that's gonna be left out as a result of it uh we are trying to secure uh three to four dozen uh units to service our membership so uh do invite a friend or a family member to participate they will thank you for it, I promise. And just uh, shoot uh, uh, another email to info at recanda.com um, as I as I lead that that uh, uh, process, and it makes it easier for uh, the team here. Just shoot an uh, uh, an email to info at recanda.com with the subject line Jazz's Hot List. Just put in Jazz's Hot List, and so we know to call you uh, because the people that are on live right now are going to have a a slight advantage, a slight advantage. <laughs> three, than days. The, three days. Three days. Three three days before everyone else uh, of launch my boy jeff did you want to can you give us some parting words my man you know what you guys you guys uh i think rec nation knows how great you guys are but uh, the only thing i can say is every time i talk to someone that has come through you guys i have never received you know such like astounding just like over the over the course of everything just like positive comments about the stuff you guys do i'm absolutely thrilled that you invited me here today i really do appreciate uh the chance to talk to you guys as always. I want to see you in person next time I talk to you. Uh, okay. I just want a little bit of that breakfast. I'll bring you some special donuts. Okay. Well, you are going to bring the donuts special for donuts. sure. For sure, some special donuts. We'll have the brunch. Um, but Jeff, all joking aside, brother, you're part of not only the REC Nation, you're part of the REC family. Um, we uh, we have to give a big shout out uh, uh, to Laura Stewart, who made this connection uh, going back to almost a year ago now. And a uh, big shout out to her. I'm sure she's watching. She's probably in the comments as well um, because she put us together. And, and our clients love you, man. Uh, we get the same feedback and look to everyone who's watching right now we are very very stringent on who we introduce to you meaning we do not just give you a phone number for an accountant or a painter or a real estate lawyer or whatever it is we're very very stringent if you look for if you needed a real estate investor savvy real estate agent in timbuktu saskatchewan we need to make sure that that relationship was strong before we introduce you to someone and so if for any reason you're not happy with someone's service that we provided uh, a name, number, and contact info for. Please let us know. But, Jeff, we get glowing, glowing testimonials. It's why you're always going to be doing this with us. When we have questions, we just press forward. Seamus and I are very right. easy like that. Um, we just press well, we forward and say go ask the team. We don't to know what we don't know. 100%. That, that's why we go to Jeff. That's yeah. why you should go to Jeff yeah. or every other Jeff that Jeff would recommend. Yeah. So yeah. if you're looking for an accountant in Vancouver – if you call Jeff's office, I can tell you with a surety that he will be able to put you in touch with one of his fellow MBAs yeah. uh, that chose to live in British Columbia yeah. or, or or revert, obviously, to, to tie in air traffic control to, to, to line that up. But uh, it is important. This networking is everything. The time that you chose to spend with us today, we thank you because you chose to be with us. But we hope that what you got out of it is the confidence that you can come to us with anything because what the only thing we don't do is pretend the only thing that we don't do is act like people that we're not. If you want broker advice, please come. I feel very confident in my ability. I feel very confident in where you take people. You want accounting advice, speak to Jeff. You need this, that, or whatever. Give us a shout. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know something, you're going to be the first person to hear it from us. We will say, I don't know this. I either need research time or I need to consult with an expert who I trust. A hundred percent. To everyone else, have yourself an amazing, amazing weekend. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms because it should all both of those should be celebrated don't, every don't single day. Don't steal the shine uh, of my weekend. Who are you? Look, what is wrong with look, you? Look, I, know, I, I know where my bread is buttered. Okay, I know where my bread is buttered. I love so, you, Caroline. Yeah, I love you, Sony. I know where the bread is buttered. Um, so I am going home at some point. I today, had to so. back off that one. It was not going to okay. be pretty, but. 
<laughs> <laughs> Steven Rochester's yelling in the background that we're stealing his thunder. Um, and and so, Seamus, I'll let you sign off, buddy. Go ahead. To the entire REC Nation, we thank you for choosing to be with us. We thank you for being you. And we wish you the absolute most blessed weekend of all time. Thank you for being here. Tons of love. Tons of love. Be well. Thanks again, Jeff. Thanks again, the insiders. Take care. Bye, guys. Take care.